Greetings everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your crummy little dusty photos go from this to this. Without further ado, let's get into it. Just before we get started, I want to show you something. Come on, come on, come with me. So this is my fridge. So if you're wondering why it looks like I've sort of prepared for some sort of film Armageddon. Basically Kodak have raised their prices and in anticipation of that, I bought a ton of film, you know, just so that I have enough film to keep me going for at least a couple of months. They're raising prices by 30%, 30%. Well, that's, at least that's what the rumors are. A part of me is still hoping that it was just some sort of sick joke by Kodak and you know, the prices aren't going up at all. But apparently it's a good thing. Apparently, I'm hoping it's a good thing. I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that them raising prices is a good thing. The reason why I'm making this um, this video is because when I first started uh, film photography, I didn't realize that when you develop film at home, um, which I assume a lot of you might end up doing, <laughs> the cost of developing through a lab is just, it adds up. It's, it's very, very expensive. If you decide to go down the route of developing your own stuff and scanning your own film, um, you're gonna realize that it is nigh on impossible to get rid of all the dust. Personally, um, I don't like dust on my scans. Well, not a distracting amount. If there's, yeah, if I'm gonna post it on Instagram and there's like a big line of dust going across someone's face, I hate that. And basically, it's very simple. It's not scary at all. I don't know if there's any other way to, to get rid of dust um, from scans other than through Photoshop. I'm sure that there probably is a different way. If there are other dust removal softwares, um, I don't know of them, but if there are, then let me know down in the comments. So I fired up the laptop, I've got power, PowerPoint? No. <laughs> I've got Photoshop up. So the reason why I've chosen this one is because um, it's got, it's very, very dusty, as you can see here. I'm using a tablet, as I said. If you're worried about, if you're scared and intimidated by using a tablet, um, trust me, there's nothing to worry about. I initially was, um, but if you just force yourself to use it for about, you know, a, a day straight, you'll get it, you'll pick it up really quickly. So firstly, what you need to do is create a copy. Um, you always want to have a backup. Whenever I'm editing anything, I like to create a backup. So on a Mac, all you have to do is Command J. For the scratches that are that don't overlap two different colors or two different areas of a photo, I just like to use the spot healing tool. So the so the shortcut for that is J, and then I like to zoom in on it by. Um, so you can zoom in on the area that you want to go over by clicking um, Command and Plus at the same time, and then you just go over it, literally, and that's it. It's that easy, just go over it, simple as anything in it. And then you just go to town over everything. So the spot even brush is really good for dust scratches that um, that are only over sort of like a single patch of color and but it doesn't really work that well for instances where the dust or the watermark sort of crosses over hard lines in different colors so what do I so for example if we look over here this bit of dust here sort of it it crosses over so sort of different colors and different hard lines, as you can see here in the hair, you know, you've got different shades of yellow, different shades of brown, and you see, you know, so if I use the spot healing tool here, the spot healing brush, you'll see what, what happens. If I zoom in, you can kind of, you can see that it just looks, it just doesn't look right. You can see how it kind of just turns to like a big blob and it just kind of mushes everything together. It just doesn't look right. A better tool would be the patch tool. So all you do is go over to the same spot, long press it, patch tool. Okay. So what you do is you select it, you, oh God, you go around it, draw around it, and then you slide it across, and then you try to line things up. After a while, after you've done you know, maybe 10, 15 images, it becomes really easy, it come, you come really quick at the process. I'm just gonna finish this off and I'll check and then I'll check in with you in a sec. I'm 
I deliberately didn't do the best job. I was just trying to, it was just more just to show you guys what you need to do. I was quite messy, quite, yeah, I didn't really, I wasn't trying to get the best result. I just wanted to show you guys what to do. It's basically just that, that literally took me about five minutes to do. My scans don't look like this all the time. This is um, a lot earlier. Um, this is a while ago and before I realized that actually I don't like dust in my scans. I'd like to minimize the amount of dust I have on my scans anyway. So make sure that you use some sort of um, some sort of wetting agent when you're drying your um, when you're drying your film. The Tetanol C41 kit that I've got, the stabilizer does have wetting agent in it already, but sometimes I find that over time, the wetting agent sort of, it loses its potency. So I will top it up with some some of my Ilfotol in there as well. Um, and that greatly, that significantly does reduce the amount of dust that clings that clings onto your scans. It doesn't completely get rid of it, but I'd say it reduces it by up to like 80 to 90%. <laughs> and on top of that, when you're scanning, I like to blow it with an air blower, a rocket blower. And then on top of that, maybe if I can still see some dust in there, I will brush it as well. So it's better to, to prevent the dust than having to remove the dust. But at least now you know how to remove the dust. You see that it's really quick, it's really simple. Um, it doesn't require much skill at all. Um, of course, over time, you will get better at it. You will, and it will just become, you'll be like banging out, you'll be dusting, you'll be dusting images like a boss. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I don't claim to be the best dust removalist. This is just how I do it. It gets the job done. It's good enough for Instagram. It's, I've never had any complaints. <laughs> of course, this was just a rough and ready tutorial. Um, I was, I cheated a bit. Uh, I just wanted to get it, you know, I just wanted to get a clean enough image to show you guys what can be done um, using this method. Anyway guys, I just wanted to finish this off by saying thank you to all the new subscribers. Again, it means a lot to me. Most of you guys who watch my videos aren't subscribed so if you haven't already subscribe tons and tons of videos lined up for this channel really really exciting I'm aiming to produce three videos a week it might not be that it might be two videos a week that's what I've been doing for the past two months and I've found that it's something that I can keep up with um, so yeah so expect at least two to three videos a week photo battles coming up I've got more videos lined up with other people more collaborations some really I've got a really really exciting shoot come up this Saturday, so you, you so you do not want to meet, miss that. Uh, yeah, and one massive, massive goal of mine, I don't know if I'll actually be able to do it, but I feel I can, but at the same time, I don't know if I can, so I need your help, and that is that I want to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year, yeah. Yep, I know, it sounds crazy, it sounds insane to me, but I thought, why the hell not? So if you guys want to be part of that journey, want to be part of, this thing, whatever it is, if you want to be here from the start, you know, I always feel some sort of giddiness, some sort of, some sort of bragging rights when I've followed someone from the start, from from very small to something very big. Um, so yeah, if you want to be part of that, click, hit that little subscribe, so you, and hit the bell. I can't remember asking people to hit the bell, but follow me on Instagram at Zane Shoots Film. Check out my portfolio at ZaneReasons.com. And with all that said and done, guys, keep learning, keep shooting. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.